Hey there, Peter Pardo here with Sea of Tranquility. Today is Friday, December the 8th. We've got kind of a special show. We had a request from one of our viewers, and actually a pretty cool request that I took to heart, and I think uh, definitely something I wanted to do. Basically, this kind of uh, little dialogue between the viewer and I kind of happened on our review of the uh, White Snake 1987 uh, Special Edition Anniversary box set. And uh, our reader had asked if we would do kind of a show looking at the White Snake kind of family tree, a little bit of history of the band and uh, and all its members, who they came from, where they went to, that sort of thing, all the albums. So. Actually, uh, a great idea. Thank you so much for that suggestion, because uh, as some of you probably know, Whitesnake is one of my favorite bands of all time, uh, right up there alongside Deep Purple and Black Sabbath and Uriah Heep, and Rainbow. I kind of like that whole family of bands. They're all kind of interconnected, sort of. You know, they're all around the same time. A lot of members kind of hop back and forth between the bands uh, in, in some cases. So this is actually a pretty cool thing for me. So let's, let's go back in time a little bit, shall we? So... Back in 1975, David Coverdale was a member of Deep Purple, obviously, and they had released the album Come Taste the Band, which was to be the final studio album for a number of years until they reformed back in the early 80s. And, uh, you know, in the band at the time was Coverdale on vocals, and you had Glenn Hughes on bass and vocals, and you had, of course, John Lord on keyboards, Ian Pace on drums, and Tommy Bolin on guitar. Well, you know, the album that they put out, Tom, uh, Bolin had just replaced Richie Blackmore, who went on to form Rainbow. And the Come Taste the Band album, which I think is a very good album, was actually not that well received, and the tour was a little bit disastrous because Bolin you know, had a, a pretty bad heroin problem at the time. Glenn Hughes had a cocaine problem, so the band was kind of splintering, and they eventually just kind of disintegrated. So uh, Coverdale decided to initially go off and start a solo career. So he put together a band, and he called them the White Snakes, okay, two different words, and released a couple solo albums. The first uh, in 1970, or oh, I believe this was 77, his debut solo album, okay, simply titled David Coverdale, White Snake. Kind of a bluesy rock album, you know, certainly not the uh, raucous uh, hard rock of Deep Purple, and not that similar to what eventually would become White Snake. Again, pretty mellow, but good. Good bluesy rock. Uh, he would follow that up pretty quickly with uh, North Winds, okay, his second solo album. So by this time, I think Mr. Coverdale was figuring out that, you know what, it's probably a good idea to just put together a band. And what he decided to do, and I'm sitting here looking to see if we can get the... Um, the folks who played on this album, yeah, so we've got Coverdale, we got a guy named Mickey Moody on lead guitar. So Mickey Moody came from Snafu and Juicy Lucy, who's a very well-respected British uh, guitar player, great slide player. Uh, who else we got here? Tim Hinckley on keyboards, Alan Spinner on bass, and Tony Newman on drums. Uh, not exactly household names, and Roger Glover actually produced the, uh, the North Winds album. So shortly thereafter... Uh, and we're talking about, so uh, I guess it was 1978, uh, Coverdale and Company released an album, an EP called Snake Bite. This is it right here. Only a couple tunes on there, but uh, when they eventually re-released this, uh, they included some of the better tunes from his two solo albums. So, you know, you got some actually some pretty pretty good White Snake staples on this album. Uh, Come On, Bloody Mary. Ain't No Love in the Heart of the City, which the band still plays to this day. Uh, Steal Away, and then you got uh, Keep On Giving Me Love, Queen of Hearts, Only My Soul, and Breakdown. So uh, nice collection of tunes on the album here. So we've got, uh, so Mickey Moody is back. And who else? Uh, let's see what we got here. Where is the list? So Mickey Moody. Um, hold on, folks. Hold on. Okay, Bernie Marsden on co-lead guitar. Bernie Marsden had done stints with Babe Ruth briefly uh, in an early incarnation of UFO. Excellent guitar player, master of the Les Paul. Uh, also joining the band at this time, Neil Murray. Everybody knows Neil Murray. He's played with basically everybody. Uh, David Dowell on drums. And uh, on keyboards, Pete Solly. Pete Solly had played with uh, Procol Harum. So this was the nucleus of the first Whitesnake band. Uh, you know, unfortunately, that uh, lineup did not hold together. Uh, eventually, Solly could not partake in the, uh, in the tour. And who comes in? Mr. John Lord. 
right? Just in time for the uh, Trouble album, which was the first full-length release of Whitesnake. So here you've got, you know, two guys from Deep Purple in the band now, along with uh, Marsden and Moody and Murray. So then we fast forward to, oh, what do we got? So that, so Trouble was, I believe, 1980. Uh, and then we fast forward to 1982. We've got an album called Love Hunter. As you can see, matching shirt, matching CD there. Uh, a very, very good album. Uh, here, you know, the White Snake sound was really starting to form uh, into that kind of real bluesy hard rock band uh, that they became known for. So we've got, again, we've got uh, Marsden and Moody on guitars, John Lord on keyboards, Coverdale, of course, on vocals, Neil Murray on bass, and uh, Duck Doyle still holding the drum kit down. Some great songs on here. Uh, Walking in the Shadow of the Blues it was one of their staples. Uh, I'll just show you a picture of the band at the time here. There they are. Okay. So Walking in the Shadow of the Blues, uh, Medicine Man, very, very good tune. Mean Business, the title track, Love Hunter, a uh, great tune. We Wish You Well. Um, Long Way Home. Really, really strong album. This one was followed up not long after. Uh, I believe, geez, what year was this? I believe 1982 also. Okay. It's called Ready and Willing. Now, by this time, we've got a, uh, a familiar face manning the drum kit. By the way, there's the Ready and Willing, Willing album. On the drums, none other than Ian Pace. So here now we've got three ex-Purple uh, members, along with Marsden, Moody, Murray, and Coverdale. Quite the strong lineup. And this, this, this particular lineup produced uh, one of my favorite Whitesnake albums. Uh, we've got Fool for Your Lovin' is on this one, the first appearance of Fool for Your Lovin'. Uh, Sweet Talker, the title track, Ready and Willing, great tune. Uh, Carrier Load, Blind Man. Ain't Gonna Cry No More, another like concert staple back in the day for the band. Love Man, uh, Black and Blue, and She's a Woman. And then there's some actual some bonus tracks on here as well. So you got uh, Mean Business, Nighthawk, great tune, Don't Mess With Me, and We Wish You Well once again. So some tunes that appeared uh, prior. So they managed around this time to slip in a live album. It's a great live album, and it's got one of my favorite. Uh, that, that, that's not a photograph, folks. That's actually a, a painting of the guys. And uh, it's called Live in the Heart of the City. Very, very underrated live album. So here we've got, uh, on the CD version, you've got a live at Hammersmith show recorded at, in 1978. So a little bit earlier. And then you got a show recorded, I believe, also at the Hammersmith, if I'm not mistaken, 1980. So you've got Come On, Sweet Talker, Walking in the Shadow of the Blues, Love Hunter, Fool for Your Loving, Ain't Gonna Cry No More, Ready and Willing, Take Me With You, Might Just Take Your Life, Purple Tune. Uh, Lie Down, Ain't No Love in the Heart of the City, Trouble, and Mistreated, another uh, Deep Purple gem. So, we fast forward, not too long, right, because they were just pumping out albums left and right. The next one is uh, Come and Get It, another really, really strong album by the band. Basically the same lineup. I don't believe it changed much at all. Yeah, actually, uh, not at all. Not at all. Don't mind the dogs barking in the background. But, uh, you know, Moody, Murray, Pace, Coverdale, Lord, and Marsden. Uh, and we got a load of really, really great tunes on here. You know, Come and Get It. What else we got here? Come and Get It, Hot Stuff, Don't Break My Heart Again. What a great tune. Oh, Lonely Days, Lonely Nights, Wine, Woman, and Song. Child of Babylon, Would I Lie to You, Girl, Hit and Run, Until the Day I Die. Another selection of really, really strong bluesy hard rock tunes, which they would just kind of continue on. The next album, uh, produced by Martin Birch, Saints and Sinners, another strong album, Young Blood, Rough and Ready, Bloody Luxury, Victim of Love, Crying in the Rain, first appearance of Crying in the Rain, very different from what you would hear on the 87 album. Here I Go Again, again, early version, a little bit different. Love and Affection, Rock and Roll Angels, Dancing Girls, and Saints and Sinners. So uh, for this particular album, I do not, I believe this was the last album to feature uh, that same lineup. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it's, it's the same. So, but here's where, you know, some changes started to take place. So obviously the Deep Purple Mark II reunion was happening at the same time. So Pace and uh, Lord, actually, no, it was not quite yet. Pace was leaving. Pace, I believe, went to play with Gary Moore right around this time. So who comes in in his place? 
But Mr. Cozy Powell, formerly of Rainbow, formerly of Jeff Beck Group, soon to be, you know, Michael Schenker Group, not long after this, uh, and for this wonderful album in 1984 called Slide It In. At this time, you know, Moody and, and uh, Marsden also flown the coop, although Moody hung around and, and co-wrote some of the tunes on here. But in comes Mel Galley on guitar, formerly of Trapeze. Okay, and like I said, you got Cozy Powell on drums. And uh, what else, who else we got here? Neil Murray stays on bass. John Lord stays on keyboards. Uh, for the U.S. version of this album, the, the, the uh, U.K. version, which came out a bit earlier, also had Moody... Uh, on co-guitar with Mel Galley, but for the U.S. version, uh, I believe it was Ke Keith Olsen produced this album, I believe. No, Martin Birch, sorry, uh, mixed by Keith, Keith Olsen. But uh, what they did was John Sykes was brought on board because uh, Coverdale and Moody kind of were on the outs. Time for a change there, so they brought in John Sykes. The album was already completed and released in the U.K., but they brought in John Sykes at the 11th hour, and they had him go in and redo a lot of Mickey Moody's guitar parts and add in some solos. So John Sykes, fresh from Thin Lizzy, also ex of Tigers of Pantang, he brought, you know, at this time, Whitesnake was just starting to break a little bit here in the U.S., you know, and Sykes had that look, you know, young, long, curly, blonde hair, black Les Paul. He was definitely a different player. He uh, very far removed from Mickey Moody and Bernie Marsden, so they decided, you know, we're going to pair him up with uh, Mel Galley for a really, really great one-two guitar punch and go out and conquer America, right? So the Slide It In album is released here, and of course, uh, you know, you know the drill here. Slide It In, Slow and Easy, Love Ain't No Stranger, All or Nothing, Gambler, Guilty of Love, Hungry for Love, Give Me More Time, Spit It Out, and Dance and Standing in the Shadow. Uh, Drop Dead Classics, top to bottom, probably one of the strongest White Snake albums ever. But Mel Galley gets an injury to, I believe, his wrist and uh, or his hand, and he can't do the tour, right? So what do they do? They go on without him. So they go out on the road. Coverdale, Sykes, Murray, uh, I believe Lord also leaves right around this time. I don't believe Lord did or Lord did part of the tour, but then the Deep Purple reunion came a calling for Perfect Strangers, so he was out, and they basically, you know, and, uh, and Cozy Powell, of course, so they just went out, they did a lot of opening gigs for major bands, did some headline stuff, and this album started to sell, and, you know, Slow and Easy started to get playing on the radio, Love Ain't No Stranger, you started hearing on the radio. This was a pretty big seller for the band, their first really big seller here in the U.S., so, you know, go out, tour the world, and they want to go back, and let's go back in the studio, and let's, uh, you know, create the follow-up, right? Because a couple years later. So what happens in the transition? So Cozy Powell winds up leaving. That's what Cozy did, right? So Cozy goes off to Michael Schenker, to MSG, and Coverdale's they need him another drummer. So who does he find? You know, I, I've heard he uh, auditioned a lot of people. Finally winds up with Ansley Dunbar, X of Journey, X of Frank Zappa, formerly had his own band, the Ansley Dunbar Retaliation Blues Band back in the 60s, early 70s. And, uh, you know, they started working on a new album. They put together this uh, incredible album, self-titled, which was actually released in 1987, so a couple years after the uh, Slide It In album. So again, the lineup for this album, for the recording, was Coverdale, Sykes, Murray, and Dunbar. Okay, As they're getting ready for the tour, it was pretty obvious that Sykes and Coverdale, although formed a great partnership, co-wrote all the tunes on this album, were just not clicking, personally. Uh, and uh, basically after the album was recorded, released, they get ready to do the tour, and basically Coverdale just decided to start fresh, right? Clean slate. They got an opening slot on the Motley Crew set to go, got to put a new band together. So... What does he do? Again, he's geared towards the American market. The, the kind of like the commercial hard rock and metal sound and image thing was going on, right? What a lot of people call hair metal. So what did he do? He went out and got two guitar players to replace Sykes. Vivian Campbell, ex of Dio. Adrian Vandenberg, had his own band Vandenberg. Rudy Sarzo, on bass. 
formerly of Ozzy Osbourne's Blizzard of Oz, as well as Quiet Riot, and on drums, Tommy Aldridge, ex of Pat Travers in Black Oak, Arkansas. A super lineup. They go out on the tour. I saw them on this tour. They blew Motley Crue off the face of the earth. They were a lethal, lethal rock and roll machine playing tunes from this album, from Slide It In and some selected oldies, right? What happened? So the end of the long, grueling tour, time for a change again, right? So, uh, you know, Campbell is out, and they need another guitar player. So, you know, again, at the, uh, the Get Ready to Record an album, and uh, Coverdale apparently was going to do the album just with Vandenberg, right? But Vandenberg gets a hand injury and can't record the album. So at the 11th hour... Who does he call and pays a lot of money for his services? Steve I, who at the time, you know, was just getting into the instrumental stuff, instrumental solo releases, uh, left Zappa a couple years ago. He had a stint in Alcatraz. And what do they do? They go into the studio to record Slip of the Tongue. Very solid album. Much more in that kind of hair metal style than anything before so this was this was what 1980 88 89 i believe right at the end of the decade yeah 1988 so you know uh still a solid album though for what it is five not really a good fit plays great on this but not really a good fit so eventually you know they release the album they get rid of the tour vandenberg by this time is healed he's ready to do the tour so they go out on the tour with this band and uh you know Poor Adrian, you know, could you imagine having to play cold lead guitar alongside Steve Vai? Yeah, not a, not a very good uh, task right there. So, you know, the album sells well. Not nearly the 8, 9, 10 million that this one did. I think this sold 1 or 2 million. So it's a big drop off in quality, but still solid. Uh, by this time, Coverdale's voice is showing the cracks of all this touring and whatnot. So uh, after the tour, they decided to take a, a extended break. Coverdale comes back a few years later, and I forget what actual year this is. Let's see if I can find out for you, um, because this, uh, actually, this album right here, oh, my computer's all locked up on the Twitter. Um, this is the uh, Restless Heart album, and you notice it's called David Coverdale, David Coverdale's White Snake. And uh, Mr. Vandenberg is with him on here. This is a very bluesy album. This kind of reminded me uh, a bit of the early solo stuff of um, of Coverdale. So you've got uh, Adrian Vandenberg on guitar, you got Guy Starka on Pratt on bass, Denny Carmasi on drums, ex of Montrose, right? And Brett Tuggle on keyboards, and some various other folks uh, joining up on backing vocals and whatnot. Solid album. You know, I think he just wanted this to be a Coverdale solo album, but the record company uh, Geffen really wanted a, another White Snake album. So maybe for contractual reasons, this came out as David Coverdale's White Snake, David Coverdale and White Snake. Solid album. Yeah, not one of their best, but still solid. So the band again kind of breaks up for a while. Uh, members go their own separate ways, but you know, the call is always strong, right? So we fast forward to, oh, I believe this is 2008. Coverdale puts the band back together for good to be bad. Right? A very, very solid return to form. You know, Coverdale's voice is not what it used to be, but I think he still does pretty well for a guy in his 60s. So who does he put together for this band? Doug Aldrich on guitar, formerly of Ronnie James Dio's band, right? Red Beach on guitars from Winger. Timothy Drury on keyboards. Uriah Duffy on bass. And Chris Frazier on drums. Okay? And it's a very, very strong album filled with really good performances. I think if you like the 1987 album mixed with some of the older stuff, you dig this album. Uh, you know, really, really good, strong stuff. They followed that up about three years later, three, three, four years later, with the Forevermore album. Probably even more successful, in my opinion. I think this is a much stronger album. This is a, a real classic album. Uh, basically, uh, almost the same lineup. Let's take a look exactly who was here. So yeah, pretty much the same couple changes. So Aldrich and Beach are back on guitars. They really formed a good guitar team at this point. Michael Devin on bass joined up, and he had a, a really good uh, vocal style as well, so he did a lot of backup vocals uh, live. And then Brian Tishi on drums, and Tishi has just been kind of playing with everybody lately. A really, really great drummer. Also a pretty good guitar player as well. 
Uh, so they go out and they tour the Forevermore. I actually got to see them on this tour and uh, did a really, really great job. And they followed it up their last recording, um, which was just a couple years back. You know, Coverdale kind of wanted to go out and revisit some of the glory days of the material he did with Deep Purple. So what they did was um, recorded White Snake the Purple album. All right. And here we've got, you know, Aldridge by this time has left the band. He's gone on to the Dead Daisies and various other projects, right? So in his place, we've got Joel Hookstra. Joel has done a lot of instrumental solo stuff. He played with Night Ranger right prior to this. Uh, he's also in Trans-Siberian Orchestra. So we've got uh, Joel and Reb as the co-guitar players. We've got, uh, continuing on, Michael Devin on bass and backing vocals. And once again, back in the band, Tommy Aldridge, okay? Tommy's been kind of keeping busy, but uh, I think his... Uh, his spot in Whitesnake is always open for when he's ready. He's just, he, that's the band he always meant to be played in. So, uh, so Coverdale and Company went out, did a tour, the Purple Tour, played a whole bunch of these old Purple favorites with some classic Whitesnake stuff mixed in. I saw this tour as well. Fantastic. So what do we got on here? We got Burn, You Fool No One, Love Child, Sail Away, uh, The Gypsy, Lady Double Dealer, Mistreated Holy Man, Might Just Take Your Life, You Keep On Moving, Soldier of Fortune, Lay down, stay down, Stormbringer, Lady Luck, and coming home, right? A lot, look at this stack of white snake here. So, and then we leave it up to today. So basically that same lineup is still together today. They are recording for their 40th anniversary. They're recording another uh, studio album that's going to be released in early 2018. They're going to tour with Foreigner in here in the U.S. in 2018. So... Another banner year for Whitesnake. If you're a Whitesnake fan, there's lots happening. So, uh, you know, that's my little family tree of Whitesnake. So as you can tell, you've got a lot of great players who have come and gone from the band over the years. They've done a lot of great things before and after, but, uh, you know, the band still kind of still keeps keeping on. So uh, if you're a Whitesnake fan, hope you like this show. I've enjoyed doing it. Kind of going back in time and looking at the White Snake uh, family tree and history and discography. So, I am Pete Pardo with Sea Tranquility videos. Blah, this is this on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Twitter, we're on Facebook, we're here on YouTube, and uh, we'll see you real soon. We got some holiday shows coming up where we're doing our best of the year uh, picks and so on and so forth. So, till then, take care. Go out, listen to all your White Snake. Got more coming up. See you. Bye.